What is the role of creative director in luxury brands? Well, nowadays, creative directors not only need to design, but also the role has become more complicated, evolving to store strategies, social media and advertising campaigns, and global-based visions. So that's the reason why for luxury brands, it's a huge task and vital for them to choose the correct creative director in order to drive the brand to success. Hi everyone, welcome to Fashion Brief. So creative directors, it's a soul of a brand without doubt. And they not only decide the look and feel of a product, but also they provide a vision for the brand, of course, but also for the consumers. For consumers to know that where the brand is heading to and whether they should follow or not. And currently, there are a lot of big news happening in the luxury industry, and most of them are related to creative directors. And so that's the reason why I'd like to contribute an episode to talk about how and why luxury brands made these decisions. And I will provide some examples to elaborate. Well, the first example I'd like to provide is the creative director of Men's Well Louis Vuitton. Let's firstly talk about the former creative director, Virgil Abloh. He passed away last year. The reason why Louis Vuitton chose him as menswear's creative director is not only because of his architectural background as much as his tenure of Half-White, the brand, but also he's good at hype building and its marketing affinity to create buzz products and also create gimmicks in the fashion show. To be honest, for me, I'm not a huge fan of streetwear and luxury goods. It should be a one-time thing in my point of view, for example, the collaboration between Louis Vuitton and Supreme. But now Louis Vuitton is trying to make it as a continuous menswear guideline, the road path to be. Well, however, I have to admit that Virgil Abloh created a huge success while his tenure at Louis Vuitton. The revenue surged thanks to his creative ideas and also vision. And obviously Louis Vuitton would love to continue Virgil's vision because it created a huge success. And this might already against the pure luxury strategy that I mentioned in another episode, but we also need to admit that luxury brands are also companies. They need to sell. And on the other hand, Louis Vuitton belongs to AVMH as a huge conglomerate. It's the light tower of the luxury brand, of the luxury group. So it needs to lead and it also needs to create enough revenue to sustain the group. And therefore, it's important for Louis Vuitton to find the correct successor for menswear, the creative director. And recently, Louis Vuitton made a decision that surprised the whole fashion industry. Louis Vuitton named Pharrell Williams as the creative director of menswear. It's definitely an unexpected choice. It's because Pharrell is not a designer, but a singer. Although we have to admit that he has his vision of how to style a piece and also to wear the unexpected. And also that's the reason why Louis Vuitton thinks that he might be a great successor for Virgil Abloh. Because what Louis Vuitton wants is Pharrell's vision, not his real techniques of making clothes, of design. The other, the rest of the things can be done by the design studio, while Pharrell just needs to provide his vision. And also Louis Vuitton's stated strategy in recent years of moving beyond fashion to transform itself to a cultural brand operating across sports, music, art and media, as well as design. It's sort of connected to the fact that Louis Vuitton has been increasingly putting emphasis on shock and awe marketing initiatives that link the brand to arena beyond fashion. For example, the brand's biggest ever art collaboration went live in January, a tie up with Japanese artist Yayoi Kusama, for which the full court marketing press has been nearly impossible to miss. And also, Last year in November, the brand flexed its marketing heft by tapping rival football superstars 
Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo to pose together in an art release on the eve of the FIFA World Cup. From the creative director to these marketing initiatives, as we can observe that Louis Vuitton is now making more loud marketing strategies as they were before. They are trying to create awareness and also set the industry standard of how they do luxury. As for the selection of creative director Farrah Williams would be a success or not, it definitely worth the while for us to observe, to see how the market observe and how the consumer embrace the brand and then the design. The next example, Gucci. Actually, a year ago, I did an episode about whether Gucci needs a new twist is because Alexandro Michele has been questioned about he's not bringing new air, bringing new vibe to the brand in order to thrive the revenue of Gucci. And then last November, Alessandro Michele resigned. And recently, Gucci has named Salvatore De Sarno, a close associate of Valentino designer Pierpaolo Picciori, as creative director. And he will show his collection in the Milan Fashion Week in this September. I'd like to provide a brief introduction of this Roman-based creative director, Salvatore De Sarno. It's because he's quite unknown in the fashion industry. He started his career in Dolce & Gabbana and then switched to Valentino overseeing the men's and women's ready-to-wear collection. And as we know that Valentino's design is more of a sleek and simple, elegant design, which he will definitely bring this new energy to Gucci. As we know that Alessandro Michele, since his tenure in 2015, he has been a legend for the brand by creating 10 billion revenues that the group and the brand has never achieved and also to provide hit products, created stories and curated brand messages that excites the consumers to explore more what is behind Gucci. Until the last fashion show, the famous twins fashion show, it still created and provided a lot of curated creative ideas and also the stories for us in the fashion industry. And so now you might wonder why Gucci want to all of a sudden change its creative director. There are mainly two reasons. The first reason is market pressure. The value of Kering's share has recently decreased 17% year on year. And Gucci as a key revenue driver of the group has shown its slowdown since the pandemic. Since the pandemic, Gucci's sale has been decreasing in comparison to other brands such as Louis Vuitton, Hermes, Chanel, they are still increasing. And therefore, Kering needs to do quick actions to change this situation in order to convince the investors. The reason why Gucci's revenue has been decreasing is because since pandemic, our lifestyles changed, meaning what we wear has been changed. And also consumers are suffering a brand fatigue from Gucci, which is always more is more. And to be honest, pandemic has been faded out slowly, little by little from our daily lives, meaning maybe we might need those party more is more clubs again. But however, the sign still doesn't show that consumers are buying more Gucci products than the other brands. Hence, Gucci needs to re-accelerate. They either don't need a timeless or fashion move, but they just need a new chapter for the brand. Also, the brand currently promised investors to stay in the spotlight with a full return to the fashion calendar, showing its collection six times a year, making the creative vacancy even more urgent to fill. The first reason market pressure also sort of correlates to the second reason, which is Gucci is trying to find the balance between fashion and heritage. The brand voice is now really loud because of more is more. And that the new creative director Gucci is hoping he can find something quieter, more practical way to present Gucci. 
and Kering said it was working to retool Gucci's brand message, reinforcing the more timeless elements of the fashion brand's backstory to complement its fashion-driven offer. In general, in my point of view, Gucci, as similar as to Louis Vuitton, is too big to fall. If Gucci as a small luxury niche brand, it can still stick on its way of war is more because in my point of view, luxury industry needs its diversity. Every designer is unique. And when it comes to luxury brands in a bigger scale, they not only need to consider about the design, but also about the business aspect. So that's the reason why Alessandro Michele has been changed to Salvador de Sarno. The last example, Burberry. The brand named Dalio Lee as the new creative director of the brand. He created plenty of successful accessoires, bags, shoes for the brand for Tika Manetta. Therefore, the brand Burberry is now also wishing Daniel Lee can create and to revamp the brand by providing his own interpretations of the brand. The first step, Daniel Lee revamps the brand by adopting a new typeface and revived its historic equestrian night logo, which creates a completely different vibe in comparison to the more modern um, feeling of Riccardo Tisci. And before the fashion show, D Daniel Lee provided some snapshots of what the brand will look like in the future. And just recently, Daniel Lee launched his first ever collection of Burberry, which provides a brand new vibe air to the brand that is more British, romantic and deep. And also his view of being British and also the brand DNA of Burberry is its functionality, practicality. Therefore, some of his bags this time for the collection, he designed for the consumers to just put it on the floor. It's definitely worth the while for us to see what kind of ideas Lana Lee will bring to the brand Burberry. And here comes the question. Why does Burberry want to change Ricardo Tisci as creative director? Well, Tisci spread headed a more modern streetwear driven image at the house, which succeeded in attracting a, young, a younger and more international customer base. But his creative vision for the brand isn't resonate broadly enough to sustainably reinvigorate the growth. And as the luxury market boomed following the pandemic, Burberry sales remained lackluster in comparison to many French and Italian peers. And therefore I have to say Burberry after Christopher Bailey looks cooler, without doubt, but um, it appears to lack individual brand character. And also what Tishy did for the rebranding of Burberry, he changed the logo into sand tariffs font, which creates a modern look, but also it lacks the uniqueness because in my point of view of plenty of um, brands, not only luxury, but also premium brands are having this font type. For example, I would say Burberry did this change at the right time is because another premium brand, Boss, is having very similar font types with a fatter sand tariff font. Therefore, in order to differentiate from competitors, Burberry definitely did a correct move. But also, it's very important for Burberry to do it right this time is because including this time and also the rebranding from um, Riccardo Tisci and the original brand it has been three different brand images throughout 10 years. Well, all in all, we can summarize throughout these three examples. Creative directors remain the crucial role of deciding branding and also the perception of the brand. And it provides a vision of the brand, where the brand is heading to. And for luxury brands, there can be plenty of reasons why they want to change or the criteria to select a creative director. It can be to generate more sales revenue based on different consumer preference, or they want to search for someone who is similar to the former 
creative director to pass on this cultural heritage or they want to revamp and create a new vibe of the brand in order to revive the brand DNA. And I have to say that these different reasons can come up with different orders. It depends on the status quo of the brand. So that's the episode of the luxury brands and its creative directors. I believe when time goes by, it will happen constantly is because of the rapid change in the fashion industry also after the pandemic. And this actually intrigues me a lot to analyze and then to put my own observation of why luxury brands are doing these decisions. And please stay tuned for more episodes. Mm -hmm.